Life is like a really big game of Monopoly. The real problem? No one ever teaches you any rules. If you want to make money, you got to invest it. That's all for me. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. All right, all right. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So who am I? I'm Yan. Uh, I've been really passionate about finance for a few years now. Uh, I invest, I trade for a living. Uh, my goal is basically to onboard you on this journey and you really try to teach you the value of money through time and how you can use the stock market as a wealth generator vehicle. Um, I really want to put an emphasis on just ethical investments, how can you can use your money to finance those companies that really try to make a change uh, in our society and just drive us towards sustainability. Goal is really for me to just show people how you can use the stock market to make money and live a life that is more money-minded and uh, I guess stress-free of money manage management and finances. The end game is really... No, I'm kidding. Uh, the real goal here is just to live uh, stress-free of money management and um, live a full and happy life and focus on what really matters, which are friends and family and people around us. I really want to onboard those uh, beginners and I don't want to do it for people that are already really money-minded and I know how to use the stock market to make money. So I want to show you the platform, the kind of risk you can take, how diversified you can be, the different theories, and how you can just use the stock market to grow your wealth over time. So let me start with those really basic concepts today uh, which everyone needs to grasp to understand the psychology and why you want to invest your money in the stock market. So as some of you know, you lose money over time. Why is that so? Well, to understand this, you need four really basic concepts which are inflation, loss of purchasing power, which, are, which these two concepts are going to lead us to the devaluation of currencies, I mean the euro, the dollar, the, the pound. And then the fourth concept is going to be compound interest and that's all related to why you want to use it to make money and grow your wealth over time. So what is inflation? Well, if you look in the dictionary, it's going to tell you, yeah, inflation is the rise of prices of goods and services over time. And that's a perfect definition. A good will be your French baguette that you go and get on a Saturday morning after a big night out with your friends. So that good, that baguette, will cost you, I don't know, $1.20 for example. In 10 years time, it might cost you $2.00. And that's inflation. If it's a service, well, it could be, I don't know, your Thai massage that you get every Saturday afternoon. And if you're like me and you never get a Thai massage every Saturday afternoon, well, I guess you can just ask your really special friend. Yeah, yeah, it's just a friend. I mean, we don't, nah, it's, yeah, she, we just give, give a massage to each other, you know? Yeah, 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 all right, I see you there. Anyway, thing is, graphically, inflation has been around 2% per year since the 2000s, that is prices of goods and services are more expensive by 2% every single year. What does that mean? That means you're losing purchasing power over time. If you take, I don't know, $1,000, with that $1,000 today, you can buy, I don't know, let's say 600 French baguettes. But maybe in 10 years time, you will only be able to buy 300 French baguettes. And that is the loss of purchasing power through time. Those two concepts, inflation and loss of purchasing power, lead us to the devaluation of currencies. If you take the euro, the euro has devaluated by 28% since the beginning of the 2000s. 28%. If it's in American dollar, it's a devaluation of 35%. 35% is so much money. That is, you can buy 35% less things in 2021 with $1,000 than you could at the beginning of the 2000s. Let, let, let's put it this way. Your grandparents, if they retired at, I don't know, in the 2000s, and they put all their money in the bank and they just let it sit there without doing anything, well, the amount of things they can buy today is 35% less than what it used to be when they first retired. And I see you there behind your camera. You're between 24 and 35 and you're putting your money in a savings account and you're like, yeah, I'm managing my finances well. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm doing awesome at life. And yeah, that's cool. But a savings account only gives you what? 0.75%, maybe 1%, max 2% on your money every year. Well, think about it. If inflation is 2% per year every year and you're only earning less than that on your savings account, when that means that basically you're just losing money through time. Sure, your $1,000 on a 1% savings account is going to be $1,000 and 10 at the end of the year. But the amount of goods and services you can buy 
is less than what you could buy with just your thousand at the beginning of the year. Okay, now let me show you how you can avoid this. Well, you just use the stock market. If you take the S&P 500, which represents the 500 largest companies in the US, that is Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla, uh, Microsoft, and many more, well, the, the average historical return over the last 90 years has been 9.8%, 9.8% on your money. Basically what that means is that your money will double every seven and a half years. If you take inflation into account, which is 2%, the average historical return is around 8%. So your money could grow, taking into account inflation by 8% every single year. What's the catch here? Why is everyone not just putting their money into the S&P 500? Well, that's because it's volatile. You're gonna have some years where you're gonna lose five or 10% on your money, but you're gonna have some years amazing, which are 16% like 2020, or more sometimes even 20 or 25%. The only thing you need to keep in mind is it's a long term process and it will just average over time. Um, so that's rule number one. Just make sure you keep that long term mindset into account, especially if you want to be a passive investor, you just want to put your money there, don't think about it and take it back in 10, 15 or 20 years time. Anyway, where am I going with all this? Let me show you compound interest and why the best moment to invest was yesterday and the second best moment is today. See you in a bit. All right, um, let me show you an example of compound interest. So we have two investors, investor A, um, he likes finance, he understands that uh, starting early and investing early is important in life. So he puts down and invests $2,000 for six years and he starts really early, he starts at the end of 22. He does it until 27, only $2,000. So in total, he's gonna invest $12,000 between 22 and 27 year old. He's gonna get an annual return of 12% on his money. Remember, 12% is pretty high. It's higher than the return of the, of the S&P 500, representing the 500 biggest company. Well, remember, this average historical return over the last 90 years has been 9.8%. Anyway, so investor A does this, while on the other side, investor B, he spends his money, he uh, loves to party between 22 and 27, he's living his young life and that's amazing for him. But comes 28 year old and he meets the woman and the girl of his life, he has to settle down, he knows that he has to buy a house, he needs to put uh, money on the side for the university of his kids. Um, so he's in a bit of trouble and he really starts saving hard for the rest of his life until retirement at the age of 65. So in total, he's gonna save $74,000, saving $2,000 every year from 28 till 65. And he obtains the same financial return, which is 12% than investor A. So we have an investor investing $12,000 between 22 and 27, while the other investor, same age, starts at 28 and puts down $74,000. Look what happens. Campaign interest work like this. At the end of the period, when they both retire at 65 year old, they have almost the same amount of money, even though investor A only put down $12,000 and the other one put down $74,000. That sum is equal to a million three hundred fifty thousand dollars and that's campaign interest so that's the first thing and second one is have a look at the difference of the return the 12 percent return between i don't know age 27 and 28 that would be around a two thousand dollar return right and if we take the age 64 and 65 that's almost a hundred fifty thousand dollar return so here you've got the real power of campaign interest the power of the force. Graphically, what do we have? Well, we have investor A, obviously we'll have more money saved up at the beginning of the period because investor B only starts at the end of 28. And for investor B to catch up with investor A, although investor A doesn't put doesn't save any more money throughout his life, it's gonna take really a while and a long time. He's gonna end up catching up with him and that will end up the same. Although investor A put down $64,000 less than investor B. And here you really have the power of compound interests. All right, um, I'm sure those concepts were really easy to grasp. If you've learned anything in this video, make sure you drop a like and subscribe. That will really help me grow this channel. 
Uh, as I said before, like this is really the beginning for me. I really want to onboard you. We'll do some way more complex and technical stuff. It's going to really require a bit of work from your part. But I believe you can set yourself up for life if you take the time to educate yourself. If you want to see those concepts again, go to www.lafinancewithyanu.com. Um, and especially if you're really young and you're like, yeah, I don't have enough money to save. I can't invest right now. I, need, I just need more, but I'll do it in five years, six years when I get a job in 10 years. No, investing really starts with developing a mentality. It's especially better if you start young and you start at a young age with really little amount of money because you will make mistakes along the way and you want to educate yourself and learn as much as you can for when the big bucks are going to come in. All right. Anyway, you can also join us on the Discord chat there. You're going to find uh, a list of trackers that I really like for passive investment. There's also a tab for active and responsible investment and obviously traders where I uh, send out my buy and sell alerts. And remember, the most important thing with managing your finances is to invest it and to not let it sit there in a bank account. If you do so, your bank is going to invest it and they're going to make money off you. Please, please, please don't be a... Tschüss!